We do not have any hand sanitizer, no wipes of any kind, that includes baby wipes as well. No eggs, no bleach, no Lysol, no milk, no paper towels of any brand, no toilet paper of any brand, and no water of any brand. Hello YouTube, it is Chris here, and in today's episode we're going to be discussing 12 items you may have overlooked in your in-home preparations. Welcome back everybody and thank you for sticking with me. Yep, you heard right. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about 12 items that you may have forgotten to add to your list for an extended bug-in scenario. So with the current events that are unfolding right now in our country, my wife and I have been traveling around town doing our normal grocery shopping because as you guys know, follow our channel regularly, we are preppers. So having most of our preps ready to go has been something that we've already taken care of months in advance. But watching the purchasing habits of a lot of people in my hometown and seeing a lot of the things that they're picking up, they're getting a couple things right, but they're not really focusing on things that I feel are important for an extended bug in situation. So this is where a lot of these lists and concepts are coming from. Now, if you are a veteran prepper, this list is just like preaching to the choir. This video is not necessarily for you, but if you have any loved ones or family members who want a very quick and simple guide, this is the video for them. So this list stems from a lot of overlooked items and preps and a lot of holes that com people commonly have in their particular in-home preps. Some of these were holes in my particular list, so this is where this list is gonna be coming down. Now, the easiest way is to just break it down section by section. The first topic I wanna to talk about is actually water. Now, it doesn't sound like anybody in anywhere in the country had forgotten about water with all of the grocery stores and Walmarts being completely cleared out of water jugs and cases. However, something that I noticed in my investigations is when I was going into the, the hardware sections of places like Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, no one had touched these water filters at all. Now, so while the power is on, people seem to forget that they have this beautiful thing called a sink and they have tap water, So, I, which I thought was kind of funny. So but just by buying a few jugs of this, you can fill up your tap water, have some water filtration and set it ready to go. Now, is it a silly idea to have a few gallons set aside for your family in case the power goes out? and you can no longer can fill this because you have no running water in a storm or a bad situation? Absolutely not, very smart idea. But it seemed that people were panic shopping and buying a whole bunch of gallons and cases and not thinking of something as simple as like pure water, Brita water filters, Berkey water filters, or zero water. What do you do if you gotta go travel around in your vehicle and go maintain and go find and collect some water and filtrate at a later date or boil it? Having things like water bricks or some jerry cans are also a really good prepping item to add to your list. But for most people, for a normal bug in, something like a zero water filter and some extra filters to have along with you for an extended stay will do you just fine. The next item on our list is cooking. Now in most situations, your stove, your waffle maker, your microwave and toaster are gonna do you just fine. But what happens if the power goes out? What happens if the grid does shut down for any length of time? Do you have an ability to cook food and keep your family fed in that time? So having some simple inventions like a grill, a charcoal grill is perfect. They're really, really cheap. The reason why this one is in a box is because I live in an apartment complex. Our apartment complex, the policy is we can't have a grill, but if we're in a long-term extended grid out situation, I run out of power, screw the policies, I gotta cook my food. Some other things to consider if you're gonna be, maybe you decided to just bug out and go camping for a week or two. Something like a sternoponic butane stove with some butane fuel, or even the propane burners would work really well. Or maybe you're just an individual and you wanna go lightweight and mobile and fast and go out in the woods. Something like a jet boil stove with some fuel work just fine. The next item you might have forgot are physical cash for finances. Let's because of all the school closures and business shutting down, restaurants, sporting events, seasonal thing, if things are just shutting down all over the place so we're at home, do we have an ability that if we're going to go to the pharmacy or the doctor or grocery shopping or paying up regular bills while things on the grid is still up, do we have the finances if we're not working, if one of our jobs were personally affected, to be able to pay for those bills for two weeks? a month, three months, and so on. The next topic of discussion is power. Now, for most situations, the power will probably be on for most of the time, but like I said, if the power goes down, if you have any specific needs, whether it's just being able to keep your cell phone charged all the way up to medical devices you have to keep charged, do you have the generators or the power supply necessary to keep those things running in a grid down scenario. Things as small as just a small battery brick to keep your cell phone charged for open communication 
all the way to bigger units like a 2,400 watt hour generator from Blue Yeti to keep small appliances and things like that running in the short term can be critical. Whether it's a medical need or just for your family, whatever your priorities are, you need to have a checklist of your particular priorities of what you wanna keep powered up if the grid actually goes down. And if you're hoping and wanting for some deeper dives into different type of generators, we do have some videos up in the right hand corner of the screen to give you some more deeper dives on this particular topic. The next topic is laundry. Like I said, if the power's on, you have a laundry mat to go to, or you have washer and dryer in your home, this is kind of a non-starter. But what happens, like I said, the power goes out, or and like in my apartment complex, we don't have washer and dryer units in our apartments, and the laundry mats around our town have started to close along with things like restaurants, shopping malls, schools, and whatnot. So this is actually a prep that is affecting me right now. So this is a problem I had to solve pretty quick, fast, and in a hurry. So. We wanted to make sure that we had plenty of liquid detergent. We use extra kind of as our preps because it's cheap, but it works, it gets the job done. But then for laundry, we wanted a separate kind of Sterilite bin. You can use a five gallon bucket. If you have a clean uh, tub in your house, you can just use the tub inside your bathroom. That works really, really well as well. However, for a mobile washer, this is the Mr. Mobile Washer. So it looks like a plunger, has a nice ergonomic T handle but it has this kind of like airflow push through the design. We're gonna overlay some footage from some other channels, but it's basically a hand washing unit that gives you a very, very efficient cleaning cycle. And then you can just use something like some cordage and some clothespins, hang your stuff out on the balcony. Up next, we wanna talk about bathing and just overall hygiene in general. A lot of the facilities that I'm used to, like if my power were to run out previously, I would just use my gym membership and then go to the gym and take a shower. That was my workaround, but guess what? Right now, my gym's closed. There's nowhere we can, we can't go into our gym and do that as a backup. So we needed to come up with a prep. Now, if you run out of running water, that's not an issue. While I have running water, take a normal shower. Do that, we're good to go. When those facilities and those services shut down, we wanna make sure that we have a backup plan. So we have a case of bathing wipes just simple baby wipes to kind of wipe off the funky bits can be a big deal on staving off things like infections and odors and bacteria and things like that that can just compound a situation like this and make the current crisis we're in even worse. The next topic we want to talk about are family pets. They are something that tragically in natural disasters, evacuation situations, and what I fear in this particular situation with the self-isolation and possible quarantine around our country, pets will be a very overlooked item to, or family member to be considered during prepping. So if you have pets and you're a responsible owner, do you have enough food for them? Do you have water allocation set aside for them? Do you have enough treats and things for them? Because with your tensions, fears, and possible anxiety, they could be feeling those same things and having those frustrations and issues as well, especially if you and them are forced to be indoors longer than what they're normally used to. The next item we're gonna be talking about are gas and gas cans. Now, it seems like a silly thing to think about, but for a lot of people, like I said, who live in apartments, with 56 million Americans who live in apartments who are inadequately prepped for disaster scenarios, a lot of homeowners who have garages and sheds and a lot of places to store these kind of things, they own lawnmowers, these are things you've already thought of. But making sure you have enough fuel to get yourself from point A to point B. If, if, for instance, you need to evacuate your location and bugging in is no longer an option, do you have enough fuel to get where you're going if there is some endemic gas shortages? Now, I'm not saying there is going to be a gas shortage, but what happens if we're in a situation in this current crisis where we are hunkered down for two, three, four weeks and we are in place and while we're just hunkering down in our homes, people are siphoning gas from around the neighborhoods in the middle of the night and you decide to go drive away and go visit family somewhere where you feel it's gonna be safer on a ranch or somewhere out of town to be you know, closer with your loved ones where you guys are, there's more of a security net there and you go to turn on your car and you have no fuel. Do you have enough to get around or get far enough to be able to do your travels. Before we move on to the next section, please understand that this list does not cover everything. These are just gaps and holes that we notice are empty in a lot of people's prepping lists and items and things that people cover. And some of these items were empty lists that we had to fill along the way over the course of the past year and months. The next one we're gonna be talking about that kind of rolls into hygiene is using the bathroom. Like I said, if the power's on, use your toilet. Hopefully I'm not triggering too many people with all that toilet paper right there because that, I mean, that pretty much guarantees me at least three wives in some European countries, I'm pretty sure. But what happens if the power runs out and water is no longer flowing, we can't just flush our toilet? 
I, for one, do not want to be using the bathroom and clogging that toilet and making it stinking and festering bacteria and just making it a very, very unsanitary environment to live in. So we've chosen kind of like the prepper toilet. Now there are some life hack ones where people use things like pool noodles and a bunch of weird crap. But for me, I was like, why don't you just go to the camping section and just buy a camping toilet seat that goes on a five gallon bucket, works just fine. We like to use these little four to five gallon scented bags. So that kind of helps keep the odor down. But a one thing we do is we actually put a very thin layer, just like we do with most people's cats, lightweight tidy cats, kitty litter. We pour a little bit in there, and as people are doing their business, they pour a little bit over, they use their toilet paper, voila, we're good to go. A five gallon bucket will pretty much one single bag usually last us anywhere between seven to 10 days. A surprising hole in a lot of people's preps are games, cards, and morale boosting items. Things that kind of pass the time, ease the tension, and kind of keep things kind of chill in a moment where people are extra filfril and there's a little higher levels of anxiety, there's a little bit more uncertainty in the world, being able to kind of forget about that for a very short amount of time can be very beneficial, especially if you have a family or kids. Now, having things like board games, card games, all that stuff can be very, very important. Another often overlooked topic is lighting. When, if your power goes out, do you have an ability to turn some form of lights on, whether it's through something as simple as candles, do you have enough candles for a certain amount of time, whether it's a week, two weeks, or longer? Or if you want to go the more technological route, you can have things like battery-operated switch lights that can be working with a remote, LED light strips with large power banks, so you can kind of keep things going. It really depends on your flavor and what you chose to do. And as some people go, well, these are first world problems that people blah, blah, blah. But when people have families and you live in a city, live in a home or an apartment, having a shock to the system where you can't go to the grocery store, you can't go to work, your kids aren't going to school, you lose power, you know, a cascading effect of things can go wrong and impact your life. It can be a very big shock to the system if you're not ready for it. So having some small sense of normalcy, just like it with being able to have warm, hot food through cooking and having some board games can be very, very, very huge and the overall sense of hope and morale of weathering yourself through that particular situation. Now, surprisingly, given the fact that in most health sections in places like CVS, Walgreens, and the shelves of Walmart in their pharmacy sections, the shelves were cleared out, there were still a surprisingly large amount of people through our research of walking around our city of people just baffled that their OTC medications they couldn't get because people will still get the common cold, people still get headaches, people still get stomach cramps, people still have high blood pressure, people still need to mitigate those systems and the panic shopping hasn't done anybody any favor. So making sure that you have enough of prescription medications or OTC meds for things that you have specific needs for or a kind of a blanket coverage how we've got going on can make a huge difference when systems and services are overwhelmed store shelves are emptied and not being able to kind of go out in a situation like this can be very important well that just about does it for this particular episode of 12 items that you may have forgotten to add to your prepping list now hopefully there is at least one item or one consideration that you were able to get some helpful info off of and even if you are a veteran prepper and you kind of know all these things now i was just preaching to the choir Maybe you have some friends or family where this video could be helpful for them. So sharing this out to your friends and family. With that said, hopefully everybody stay safe and see you in the next one.